I'm making this video because I need you guys to be aware of yet another difficulty slash obstacle slash something to be mindful of in this completely crazy hobby that for some reason we enjoy and that makes us suffer and we like suffering. I, I don't know what's wrong with us, but <laughs> something is definitely wrong with us. And it's linked to a recent video that I did, which was about the difference between uh, uncooled astrophotography dedicated cameras and regulated and cooled astrophotography dedicated cameras. And I was pretty clear in that video that uh, I would always want to go for a cooled regulated version of the camera because they make the process simpler, calibration is easier, and there's less thermal noise. And even if it means that I'm within a budget and I need to downgrade the sensor in order to get the cooling functionality, that's what I would personally do. And in that video, I got a very interesting comment by Richard Carande. Okay, Richard, I'm sorry about butchering your name, about how on his ASI uh, 2400 full frame camera and his ASI 2600, turning the cooler on in the camera, basically making use of the regulated cooling functionality of the camera that he bought, it would degrade his image quality. His stars would become oblong or star trailish, whereas if he turned the cooler off, the stars would be pinpoint. And this would only occur at higher focal lengths. And he pointed me to a thread on Cloudy Nights exactly about this topic. And here we have the thread by Buckeye Stargazer. And you can see on the left image, the stars are slightly oblong. And this is when he had the cooler of his, I believe, uh, 6200 mm Pro ASI camera uh, turned on. And then with the cooler off, the stars are pinpoint. And this is not a one off. This is very repeatable according to Buckeye Stargazer. We have another example, uh, this time by a, a user of the name RNG. Uh, and I love that name, RNG. Anyway, uh, where with the fan and the cooler of his cameras on, the stars, as you can see, are very streakish. They're very star trailish, very oblong. Whereas when he turned the fan off, the stars are pinpoint. They're round, they're beautiful. What the heck is happening? Well, it's pretty simple, really, what is happening. Cooled cameras, as I was explaining in my previous video, they generate heat to cool the sensor of the camera. That heat needs to be dissipated. And the to in, in order to avoid having huge heat sinks, it has to be uh, dissipated actively, meaning we need a fan. And there is a fan within the housing of this camera here, for instance, and of all cooled cameras. And a fan is a moving part that can uh, create vibrations if the design of the fan and how it is connected to the rest of the camera body is not perfectly thought out. And it does seem like the typical ZW design is actually not very good in that respect. This is because the fan in the ZW cameras is connected almost directly to the casing of the camera. So it can kind of resonate with the casing of the camera, just like a guitar will amplify the sound of the strings being plucked or stroked or whatever you do with a guitar. <laughs> and when I was looking at this particular camera, which is the uh, ASI 071 MC Pro camera that was sent to me by one of my subscribers who designed an awesome autofocus system for Red Cat 51. I'll be featuring that in the channel in a further video. If you don't want to miss that, click the subscribe button. Welcome to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, join the channel or join my Patreon, etc., etc. But anyway, going back to this uh, story, I was looking at the camera and I'll put pictures on the screen. There are uh, very small like silicon kind of washers that are in between the fan itself and the camera housing. And this doesn't seem to be enough because I tried uh, cooling the camera and then holding the camera in my hand. And when I hold the camera in my hand gingerly, I can feel the vibrations. And I totally understand how it could be a big problem at high focal lengths uh, because the vibrations can resonate within the whole imaging train, within your whole OTA, uh, optical tube assembly. 
So there's a lot of extent where the vibrations can impact your system if you have a long focal length. But for shorter focal lengths, the symptoms simply aren't detectable. And so I started to wonder, is my rising cam uh, camera, uh, our tube tech camera with an IMX571 sensor free from this issue. So with a lot of anxiety about the result in Japanese, I would say, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Um, and I connected the camera to USB. I connected to 12 volt and I turned on the cooler at full power. I held it in my hand, not a hint of vibration. Whereas on the 71 MC Pro, it was extremely uh, tangible. And so I opened up the Taupe Tech design to see what was the big difference with ZW to avoid those vibrations. Now it should be noted that very recently Taupe Tech actually sent me the newest iteration of their IMX571 sensor cameras, uh, which are share shared with uh, Rising Cam, Ogma, and a whole list of other uh, vendors that have tons of little changes, which I'll probably feature in ongoing videos. Uh, but one of the changes is also to the fan uh, holding system. And so I decided to open the camera. I removed the four screws that are in the back to remove the blue housing and uh, had a look at how, it lo at how it was inside. And this is the result. In the old version of the Taupe Tech design, you can see the fan is like this. It is not in contact with the cooler. It's somewhat in contact with the PCB boards, but it's also very importantly, not in contact with the camera housing. So it cannot resonate as effectively. And it is in this design suspended by springs. So it's like really avoiding vibrations as much as possible. The newer design is actually slightly different. It looks like this when I opened it. And again, the fan is not in direct contact with anything. It is mounted on some silicon feet type of thing. So it's not contacting the heat spreader. It's not directly contacted the boards on the side. The only points of contact it has with the rest of the assembly are through four silicon feet. And so it's kind of like suspended there. And I asked Toptech why they did that. And the reason why was that it made exchanging the fan because a lot of people like to upgrade the fan in their cameras much easier than the spring uh, hanging version kind. But that made me realize that the design of the fan, in addition to the actual fan quality that you put in your cold camera can have a massive impact on the quality of the pictures that we take at high focal length. Because in a way, it's actually lucky that the vibrations are able to cause symptoms that are visible because vibrations, if they're not really detected as oblong stars, they very easily are mistaken with poor seeing because it's pretty much the same thing, the same symptoms. And it actually brought me back to a time when I had a Celestron Edge HD uh, 800, which I was using with the reducer at a focal length of 1,400 1, millimeters. And I was using it together with, at the time, my ASI 1600mm cool camera, the very first generation of that camera. And I, did, I was not getting good results. I remember vividly a target that I was doing. It was the Pelican Nebula. You can see the H-alpha stacked uh, result here. I unfortunately don't have the individual frames anymore. This was a long time ago. Uh, and these stars were trailing. And the whole equipment was actually uh, on a super expensive mount that had very high precision encoders. The night was without wind. I was looking at the guiding results. The guiding results were perfect. It was with the Celestron off-axis guider, which is a Rolls-Royce of off-axis guiders. And I could not, for the life of me, understand why my stars were oblong. I'm still not sure, but now I strongly suspect that it could have been the fan in my 1600 mm cool camera. And it's a shame because I basically understood the symptoms that I saw as, okay, Tokyo has very poor seeing. Um, it's probably all my fault. And so high focal lengths cannot work from here. 
and I might have been completely mistaken. And thanks to Richard's comment and the thread by uh, Buckeye Stargazer, I now know that this might not be the case. Okay, so now I talked about what the problem is, what the symptoms are. So if you are imaging at high focal length with a cooled camera, especially a cooled camera that has a design that attaches the fan, maybe not directly, but close to the actual casing of the camera, you may want to try taking frames with the cooler on and off. Maybe take advantage of the next full moon to do that, because then you can waste and have fun with imaging time as you like, and see, do you get better star shapes with the fan off, with the cooling off? Please do let me know down in the comments. I want to see how frequent this is because I wasn't aware of this and I'm sure a lot of you guys weren't aware of this. So, okay, if you do have poorer star shapes with the uh, fan on and the cooling on, there is a solution. So again, it's courtesy of Buckeye Stargazer. As far as I understood it, he actually replaced the fan, but from what I see, it's actually not necessary. Uh, one of the modifications that he did are on the is on the screen right now. He used uh, silicon anti-vibration mounts like this and basically threaded the fan in a way in those silicon pads before attaching it back to the camera. I think the camera looks actually super cool like that. Um, and this apparently fixed the issue. And of course, I'll put all the links to the th the Cloudy Nights threads, but also to the to on Amazon where you can buy those uh, feet if you're interested in looking at, at those so that you could fix this issue. Now I'm wondering whether there could be other workarounds such as like loosening the screws that hold up the fan, but it was mentioned in this thread and apparently it hadn't worked. So maybe this is something that uh, ZWO could think of in enhancing in future iterations of their camera design because I, I know they're always good on innovation and fixing any issues that, uh, that may be uh, there. If it is indeed a flaw in the design uh, compared to something like my tube tech camera here. Obviously, my, start, my sample size is very small, although there are very obvious differences in how the fan is mounted in the ZW cameras versus the Tope Tech cameras. So yeah, another point to be mindful of, to be uh, <laughs> thoughtful about when you're doing astrophotography, but I'm really thankful for Richard to bringing this to my attention. Uh, by the way, have you noticed my new hoodie? This is another Quips hoodie that's been designed by my subscriber and all around amazing designer called uh, Radu Celariu. And it is a t-shirt or hoodie or a lot of items. You can choose them uh, down I'll put the link down below to the merch uh, store, but it says like wait before post processing as an alternative meaning to the PixInsight weighted batch pre-processing WBPP, which is infamously long. And I love this because we have this little astronaut kind of waiting and waiting with a, with a never ending progress bar at the bottom. And the astronaut has a little quiv uh, kind of shoulder tag. I love this. If you're interested, it's available in the merch store. But with that, I'll be again super interested to see what you think of all of this in the comments. And I really, I don't want to be bad mouthing ZW, ZW makes super innovative products, etc. It just so happens that a few users on that thread saw the same symptoms. A user in my comments saw, the, saw those symptoms. Users in separate tr threads saw the sim symptoms with ZW cameras. And so it, I think it, it merits bringing this up, especially since I could feel the vibrations just holding the camera in my hand. With that, I hope this has been interesting and maybe helpful if you're imaging at high focal length or you have weird oblong star shapes that you cannot explain. Uh, there's always a deeper hole to, to just delve into in this hobby. The rabbit hole never ends. Ah, so anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you can to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.